Hello and welcome everybody. Let's take a look at this really beautiful Victorian scrapbook. So this cover is gorgeous. Now this is all done in relief and you can see they are embossed. How pretty. It looks like they're cloth, but they're actually not. This one has a little bit of rubbing. And there's another one up here. So I've seen these in really bad condition and this one is in really great condition on the cover. We'll take a look at the spine. There is a split there. Maybe that's about a five inch split. Other than that, this spine looks pretty sturdy. Not bad. The back looks nice. And there's the date. Patented March 1876. Let's take a peek inside. I'm gonna show you every page. He's a cute little die cut guy. There are some beautiful items in here. I think they've also been very artistically placed. Sometimes these books just have no rhyme or reason. But I think this is very well thought out. You'll see some of these items have some beautiful lithography and chromolithography. We're also going to take a look at some steel engravings. Such beautiful illustrations here. Many of these are Connecticut based. If I had a time machine, this is the place I'd like to go to. Those are all beautiful. I love the metallic gold ones. There's a cool steel engraving. Some great ones from a coal dealer. How pretty. One of each all around the whole page. Except for down here, what is this? Book stationery and paper hangings. That's interesting. Norwich, Connecticut. Yeah, a lot of these are Norwich based. We'll see as we go here. Scrapbooking in Victorian times was often a family pastime. Now I'm not sure if this book is made with water soluble glue or not. I mention that because there is a way to soak all of these off these pages and to get these off here pristinely. I don't know how to do that and I'm just gonna keep the book intact. That's up to you if you wanna do that or not. Here's some very beautiful ones. The idea was for these companies to make these beautiful trade cards that nobody would ever wanna throw out. And of course, in Victorian times, for the first time, color items such as these could be mass produced. This page has some awesome candy shop ones, Norwich, Connecticut. These really are beautiful works of art, each one. Here's a Melon's Baby Food trade card. Boots and Shoes, Providence. I'd like to just take a look in that shop too. That's a great cat. Here's a calling card. So some of these have some light foxing. Wow, that one's super cool. Look at that. Look at this one. Look at the flame on that. So nice. <laughs> Frogs jumping through hoops.
See, somebody really thought this whole thing out. Here's the whole winter scene page. some calling cards. This one and this one are calling cards. These are beautiful, the metallic silver. So I didn't look these up and I would just assume that some of these are valuable. die cuts right here. So this was for mental and physical exhaustion and I'm sure this actually worked. It probably was full of cocaine but I bet you it really did perk people up. It's a little bit of a missing piece right here. I'll just point that out. Yeah, these are great. So see, these are all grouped together. Wow, those are awesome. Love those. They're sort of creepy, right? Sometimes these Victorian cards can be a little bit creepy. I guess this is where, this is an animal page. <laughs> Wow, that's great. That is all flat. It looks like that's going to open, but it doesn't. Beautiful. Here's a few from, from New London, Connecticut. That's beautiful. Very nice. I love these old corset die cuts. That's great. Look at the little cherub coming out. That's beautiful. Oh, look, she's wearing jewelry. I'm a jewelry girl, so when I see jewelry, I get very excited. Okay, so this is ripped right here, so I just wanna point that out. So this is just a little miniature page. And so I think maybe it's supposed to go like this. Yeah, I think that's what it is, right? Because you can see that little dirt thing right there. So I think this just, uh, somehow cracked in half. So 
So in the early 1900s, trade cards became cost prohibitive. It was much better, much cheaper to just publish things in magazines. And so these fell out of favor. So this is just a great time capsule. I'm just going to turn the book because these are going the other way. This is beautiful. This takes up the whole page. Calendar from 1884. So this page right here is blank. There's a beautiful die-cut rose. This is also embossed. These two pages are excellent. Sewing supplies, of course, that was a really big thing. Yeah, the train one's awesome. These are all for thread. See, they're very, very nicely organized. This one's great. Look at that little fairy. Isn't that cool? So Jumbo, I believe, was an elephant that was owned by P.T. Barnum. That one's got to be collectible. Oh, here's another great one. Look at that. Hard to beat. <laughs> here's a great old Santa. I love these Victorian Santas. They almost have kind of a stern thing. They're not very jolly like the modern day Santa, which is what I really like about them. Interesting. I hope I'm not going too slow or going too fast. I don't want to make anybody seasick.
You may notice the condition on most of these. It's really just outstanding. Look how vibrant that white is. Oh, that one's great. Huh, Clark shoes. I wonder if that's, you know, modern day Clark shoes or if that was something different. Another shoe ad. Oh, this one's really beautiful and big. Is it embossed? Oops. Nope. In the sulks. Huh. Another super cool one. Well, now we've learned this Willis W. Clark, that's what these are too, because they all have those same red birds. So likely their information is on the backs of these, which we can't get to, of course. <laughs> the old guy's trying to listen in. That's pretty funny. And I think there's just a couple more pages. Oh, wow, look at those great hats. So these are from a place in Willimantic, Connecticut. So New London and Norwich and Willimantic are all the shoreline of, in Southern Connecticut. Look at these mermaids. Wow, that's awesome. I can't figure out what this one is. Is that like a, is that a fan? And that's blowing him back? I'm not exactly sure what that is. I can't figure that one out. And let's see, I guess this is the last page. Yes, so this is blank. The name of my eBay store is the Funky Pickle Store. This is up for bid right now. It's the end of December, 2020, just in case you're interested in bidding on this item. So that's that. I hope that you enjoyed looking at this. Whether or not you're interested in bidding on it, I just hope that you enjoyed all this eye candy in this beautiful, beautiful Victorian scrapbook. Cheers, everybody.